Hello, this is Billy Kaur from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. It is August 20th, 2013, a Tuesday evening. And what you're looking at right here is something I've had for about three years now. Now, as you know, um, the first computer I ever used or ever even saw was my aunt's Gateway 2000 P5100XL in the summer of 1995, which she still has, by the way. And ever since then, I've been a pretty big fan of... Um, mid-90s Gateway 2000 computers, a lot like I am with mid-90s Packard Bell computers. And um, she had this catalog, or not really a catalog, but a, a magazine hang, hanging around. Um, and in the fall of 2010, she gave this to me. And I've been meaning to do a video of it ever since then, but for whatever reason, I just keep putting it off. So I figure I might as well go ahead and do it now. Um, this magazine is um, dated December of or winter, um, I should say, but more likely December of 1996. And has a lot of interesting topics in here about the upcoming Microsoft Office 97. <laughs> Rowdy Friends Tour, Build Your Own Web Page, you know, um, probably with GeoCities or something. And the exciting future of digital video. Oh boy. <laughs> or as um, my friend Elmo3 would say, oh boy. <laughs> I'll let me check something here on Facebook. Speaking of Facebook, I wonder at what point in this video my friend Chris Rogers will. Um, message me. <laughs> and wow, a friend of mine saw a DeLorean today. Jealous! <laughs> but, um, I'm doing this via tripod. I got this sitting up top of my Latitude D630. I'm just gonna see how well it comes out, so let's go ahead and open it. And that's the table of contents. And on the left is a letter from Ted, Ted Waite, um, Chairman and CEO of um, Gateway 2000 Incorporated. And right here is a table of contents. Oh, Windows 95 tips. That'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, let's flip the page. Uh, more contents. Uh, hmm, software and um, accessories. I think I remember having that Sesame Street game back then on my Packard Bell. Now, I remember having the trial for that um, Schoolhouse Rock thing, the demo. And of course I had this game. <laughs> Some industry news. Now we're not going to go through this whole magazine. Um, There's too much to go through here, but I'm going to... Um, cover some of the more interesting stuff in here. Like I'm going to skip this news thing. And this, um, I want my digital TV, a musical road trip into the future of television. Oh yeah, that's that real fancy um, Gateway 2000 they were pushing back then. Um, I think there'll be more about it in this video on this magazine, I should say. Okay. Uh, just a bunch of articles here. I'm mostly going to focus on the ads and the pictures because those are the coolest. <laughs> oh boy, that's interesting. Um, Microsoft Office 97 Professional Preview. Uh, what do we got here? Um, it pretty much tells you um, about what all um, Office 97 is going to have. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Well, Chris didn't message me, but El Mall 3 did. <laughs> You're not off the hook yet, Chris. Uh, let's see. It's by Ram Tackett. He, um, who tested out the Windows 97, not the Windows 97, there wasn't even a version of that called that, the Microsoft Office 97 um, beta. And he talks about the Office 97 assistant, I guess the, I guess Clippy as a like to call him. I'm talking about Excel 97. Games and entertainment packs sucked into a time warp. Hmm. Talks about several um, fun computer games, it looks like. Okay, who keeps tagging me in pictures? <laughs> I think some reviews on various um, computer games that were popular in the later part of 1996, um, a golf game, arcade racing, um, Al Unser Jr. arcade racing, um, never heard of it, but it looks interesting, uh, Windows 95 game sampler, um, I think I've tried that. Sue 27 Flanker, or is it Flonker? It's like um, some kind of flying game. Must be one of those World War II things. Oh, here's one I def I'm definitely fond of. Um, 3D Ultra Pinball. That was the first game I ever got for my 822, actually, back in 1995. Yep. 3D Ultra Pinball brings the granddaddy of all arcade games to your PC. It's a bit like a 1950s pinball machine with a 90s look wedged onto your computer. That sounds kind of painful. The Journeyman Project 2, um, I know Packard Bells came with the original version of that very, very freaky and creepy game. Okay. You know what, I'm gonna go tri tripodless now. This is getting to... It's about to kill my arms. Okay. Go to the next page. Well, here's some more, um... I think, think some gateway peripherals. Spruce up your gateway PC for the holidays. It's easy and affordable because we offer Gateway customers great prices on the hottest software, hardware, upgrades, and peripherals. Now ain't that nice of them. Back back when everyone still called the internet the World Wide Web. I kind of miss those days. <laughs> I probably ought to bring that up on the Internet Archive sometime see if it's there. Okay, here's some software. I think stuff we were looking at earlier. Um, I think the kids' backpack three. Oh, this looks interesting. Stuff they're stocking with the kids' backpack three. It's chock full of educational excitement for all ages and learning levels. They'll love showing off the rad cow spotted gateway backpack, and you'll love saving over half the total retail value of one hundred and eighty-two dollars. And from if you buy that from Gateway, you can get it for only fifty nine dollars. <laughs> you know, I believe I've seen that Gateway two thousand backpack on eBay recently. What if I ought to look into that? Okay, with this um, kids backpack, you get Schoolhouse Rock Grammar Rock. I actually um, remember playing the demo of that. On oh, this game needs no introduction. Putt putt goes to the moon. Oh no! <laughs> I do a very bad Mr. Firebird. Putt-Putt and his friends are left behind on the moon by astronauts in this space-age world of laughter and learning. Well, actually it was just Putt-Putt that was left on the moon, but Will Rover was there, but he was left there 25 years before Putt-Putt got there. Your child will love this cosmic adventure and, de and develop critical thinking skills at the same time. 
I remember it gave me um, a strange case of diarrhea, but I still love the game. <laughs> Oh, Sesame Street, get set to learn. I need to find another copy of that, because I remember playing that quite a bit when I was a kid. Math Blaster, um, I never had that. Emo and the King. Now, this I've never heard of. Based on a classic African folk tale, this is the story of a courageous boy who learns that all kinds of that all kind acts are rewarded with kindness. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, finance pack, nothing interesting there. Oh, um, games and entertainment pack. Sit that Su 27 flanker game again. And guess what? Chris did it again. <laughs> Happens every time, folks. And that Al Unser Jr. Arcade Racing. 3D Ultra Pinball, um, one of my all-time favorite games, Journeyman Project 2. Greg Norman Ultimate Challenge Golf, Windows 95 Game Sampler. I have that somewhere. I need to take it for a test run sometime. It, um, Play tri you can play trial versions of more than 20 games and experience more than 10 demos running on Windows 95, running on DirectX technology, including The Hive, Havoc, Doom for Windows 95, Full Tilt, and Fury Cubed. And that was back when DirectX was a rather new thing. Um, before that, you had WinGs on Windows 3.1. see what's on the next page. Oh, that's like we got an ad for a computer here. It's like we got a GS180 family PC system. Now, interesting thing about the way um, Gateway 2000 um, numbered their systems back in the day was the number you see in their model numbers is actually the CPU clock speed. Like you see, this is a GS180. That must mean it has, yes it is, a 180 megahertz Pentium processor. Well, actually, this is a Pentium Pro. Pretty interesting. I, I think those were made of gold, if I'm not mistaken. 32 megabytes of EEO RAM. Excuse me, i got to scratch my leg. 256K of internal cache. Uh, crystal scan, 700 monitor. Uh, 3D 64-bit PCI graphics with 2.5 megs of video memory. Uh, floppy disk drive, 8-speed um, CD-ROM drive, 16-bit um, and Sonic Wavetable sound card. Um, as much as I love Gateway 2000s, those sound cards were junk. I tried one one time. A MIDI sounded horrible. Drivers are hard to find for them. And in fact, my Ants Gateway 2000 actually came with a and Sonic card, and she wound up replacing it pretty soon after um, with a I think some kind of Sound Blaster card. Uh, Altec Lansing speakers. Um, Gateway was notorious for using Altec Lansing. Uh, 14 bald modem, seven bay mini tower case. Keyboard, Microsoft Mouse, Windows 95, uh, offer for um, Dish Network, and uh, Generations 2 3 software collection. All of this could have been yours for, for only $2,499. Yeah, that's not a bad system for the time. In fact, um, I think there's there are actually even better Gateway 2000s at this time. Um, we'll probably see some of them in a little bit. Uh, Windows 95 tips. <laughs> I love the Windows logo um, in the background there. Uh, apparently, if you've got 24 megabytes or more of RAM in your Gateway 2000 system when you're running Windows 95, you may, able to, may be able to increase the performance. Right click on My Computer and select Properties from the menu. Under the Performance tab, choose File System. Change the typical role of this machine to Network Server with Read Ahead and 
optimization at full. Huh. Must use a lot of energy. <laughs> oh yeah, the Gateway had pretty awesome laptops back then too. Oh yeah, they had an FTP site back then for drivers. Uh, Gateway makes some rowdy friends. Monday Night Football on ABC, apparently. Oh, this is that computer I was telling you about. Um, some things you just have to experience yourself. Nice going, champ. <laughs> some things in life are so extraordinary, words just can't describe them. That's how I felt sometimes when, that's, you know, that's how I felt when I got my 822 back the other month. Like the Gateway 2000 Destination Big Screen PC. It's a combination of two familiar products, the television and the personal computer. But the results are startling. You have to see it. Then you'll know what we, we mean. Experience Destination today at selected sc scores. Nobody beats the whiz. Never heard of that store. And CompUSA, now I have heard of that store. They had one in Greensboro back then, but I never saw that here. Basically what this computer was, was a, um, a really powerful Gateway 2000 PC with all kinds of features built in and a 27-inch television that acted as a television set and a computer monitor. And I believe a remote control. Didn't really catch on, mostly because um, to buy it you had to sacrifice both one arm, one leg, one eyeball, and your choice of artery. Hmm, add-ons. Um, it's like we got some hardware. Uh, Wavetable CD-ROM drive, Wavetable multimedia kit. Uh, that's one of their Insonic cards. Never cared for them. Um, it comes with some cool software though. Uh, Encarta 96, SimCity Classic, Ex Microsoft Explorpedia, Printmaster Gold, I remember having that on our 822 and Windows 95 CD sampler. Microsoft Home, boy do I remember that logo. Ah. Hope you guys appreciate what I'm doing for you. I'm in a very uncomfortable position right now. I'm standing on my knees. <laughs> That's so all we got. Oh, wow. Uh, an Epson Color Digital Camera. Those were quite... A digital camera was quite rare in 1996. Snappy Video Snapshot. What's this? Snappy is a high-definition um, video digitizer capable of capturing still images from any video source. I'm kind of like a TV tuner card, except all I can do is just take pictures. Sky Master Joystick, oh, and Sidewinder 3D Pro Joystick, very, very good joystick. Wow, wow, fifty-nine dollars. To think the one I have over there will only cost me, I think, two dollars at Goodwill a few years ago. <laughs> oh, printers, um. Bunch of old ink jets, I guess, and Epson, um, Hewlett Packard. Oh, this must be a little, um, miniature catalog. Oh, there's that destination computer again. Um, we've gotten bigger, bigger, bigger this year. <clears throat> now, that, now that's manly. Wow. That sounded horrible. I sounded like Jack Armstrong's gorilla. <laughs> yep, um, well, that's not as much as I thought it was. $3,000, but still, that's kind of <laughs> much. Now I even got a surround sound system. Oh, so I got another, just a standard computer system here. Oh, 
I wish I could scan these pages, but with it being like a magazine, that'd be kind of hard to do. Oh, a Gateway Solo Laptop. Um, very cool machines. Oh, yeah, I think it's advertising a Gateway 2000 MasterCard credit card. Well, these are just the their line of computers at the time, starting with a with a very modest um, P5133 um, for seventeen hundred dollars. Actually, um, this P5166, I actually had one of these at one time. Um, about a year ago, I bought one of these at Value Village for a few dollars. It's a very nice computer, but I wound, I wound up selling it earlier this year because I needed the money, needed the space, plus the case was not in very good condition. And yes, it had one of those crappy Son and Sonic Soundscape cards. And it goes all the way to their best one, the G6 200XL. With that, you get a 200 megahertz Pentium Pro, 64 megs of RAM, 256K of cache, um, a 3D video card with 8 megabytes of memory. That. That's, that was unheard of in 1996. 3.8 gigabyte hard drive, 8 speed CD ROM. With, wow, it, a CD, a CD writer. I didn't think those were that common in 1996. Uh, the soundscape card again. 12 bay tower, boy, that. <laughs> Comes with Office 95 Professional, and you can get an upgrade coupon to 97. 3,799 dollars. You see, this was back when you wanted—if you wanted a computer—you pretty much had to take out a second mortgage on your house. <laughs> and you got the professional grade systems. I guess kind of like um, how Dell has their Inspirons, and then there's the Optiplexes, and the Latitudes, that, that all that good stuff. Oh, there's the destinations. Woo! That's almost five thousand dollars, folks. I can I, I can buy a decent used car for that much. <laughs> and the laptops, um, those those the, the Gateway Solos are always were always real neat. Wouldn't mind having one. And the printers, nothing. Exciting there. Oh, the monitors. I think this one right here, the 15 inch Vivitron, is what my aunt's has, although she's not using it right now. I think she's using some kind of Panasonic monitor on it. And it uses a Sony Trinitron, which is very good, and its highest possible resolution is 1280 x 1024. Wow, $400. <laughs> this one on the left, this 14-incher, um, is actually showing Putt Putt Goes to the Moon on there. Wow, a 21-inch CRT monitor. That would just about kill me to look at. <laughs> it's got the keyboards, um, the any key keyboard. Um, those go for quite a bit on eBay. The Microsoft Natural keyboard. I don't think there's mu much anything natural about it. Ethernet adapters. Um, those were mostly used by businesses at that time, I believe. And hard drives. Wow, uh, just a one gigabyte drive was little over two hundred dollars and now you can get a one gigabyte USB flash drive for just for the price of a McDonald's hamburger pretty much oh yeah and the tape backup unit 
which are pretty much useless these days. Pentium Overdrive Processor. You know, it seems like um, electronics these days, as far as technology is concerned, they don't give stuff exciting names anymore like Overdrive. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, memory upgrades. Altec landing speakers. Oh, it's two to one, has subwoofer. Those were very, very common, but were actually very, very good speakers. Okay. Uh, a little Q&A. Uh, nothing exciting there, and using Java, that was kind of a new thing. Oh, there's that destination again. Oh, it's that one that's almost $5,000. <laughs> I think you can truly see why this didn't catch on. That's why. <laughs> Nothing cool here. It's like a little section for kids. Little um, ad for 3D Ultra Pinball. Very, very cool. Wow, I did not know you could use a joystick on that game. I'll have to try that. A little um, look at people's life with um, children. Well, how, this kind of shows you what children, real children, were using their computers for in the mid 90s. Um, like this 13 year old girl was using it to write to pen pals, make charts, write stories, and design sheets for her little brother to color. And Emily Ash, um, 11 years old, um, Uses it for looking up spelling word definitions and to use Microsoft and Carter 95. And my neck is about to give out here. <laughs> A silly little story about the, how the gateway box got its spots. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm about to kill myself here. I might type this up, this little story up, and post in the description. <laughs> Gateway um, word search. Some kind of computer go code game. Oh boy. I'm in pain. <laughs> Oh yeah, new from the spot shop, a bunch of um, gateway accessories, we got a gateway keychain and mug, in fact, that mug, I actually have a different version of it up right up there. Bought that last summer at Value Village for about 75 cents. We got the shirt and everything. And yes, folks, you're seeing that correctly. That, my friends, is Gateway 2000 underwear. Tell all your friends and family that tonight you got to see Gateway 2000 underwear. <laughs> a cap, a little um, mug thing. Uh, I actually had the this one years ago, a Gateway 2000 mouse pad. My aunt gave it to me years ago. I don't think I still have it, though. I wish I did. <sighs> Build your own website. 
nowadays if you want your own website it's pretty much a lot easier to come by these days I'm sort of losing my juice here folks I'm if I sound kind of out of it I'm I really am not sure what those are <laughs> dear gateway um fan letters and I want to work at Gateway 2000 when I grow up. Well, for those of you who grew up, sadly, Gateway is now a part of um, Acer. And Acer is a pretty good company. In fact, I just bought an Acer, um, a new la Acer laptop this week that should be delivered later this week. They're really good, but I don't know. Um, I just miss the the old days of computers when it was all new and exciting. And there we go. That that was a look at a Gateway 2000 magazine from December of 1996. And so, folks, I need to go rest up a little bit. This took a lot out of me for some reason. So for now, this is Billy Core signing off.